Hello, everybody. This is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we're back with another of our Five Minute Histories videos. And today I'm out on Pulaski Highway, almost at the county line, because we're going to talk about Pompeian olive oil. And we have a little bit of a treat today. Not only are we inside Pompeian, we got a tour of their bottling plant, but we're going to be joined by the uh, Pompeian's executive vice president and chief operating officer, um, Muna Asawi, who's going to share with us a little bit about what Pompeian is doing today. But let's start with what Pompeian is. Pompeian has been an oil company, olive oil in particular, and been in Baltimore since 1906. In fact, it is the country's largest olive oil producer today. But let's work our way up to that. We're going to start back in the 1800s, the late 1800s, in a place called Lucca, Italy. If you haven't heard of Lucca, it's near Genoa, and it's been a fantastic city for thousands of years. Founded by the Etruscans, became part of the Roman Empire in 200 BC. It was the site of the first triumvirate, if you remember your world history. That was Pompey and Julius Caesar and Crassus. Um, form their political alliance there. Maybe a little bit more recently in the, uh, the Renaissance, it was a fantastic city-state. And in fact, it has a lot of its original Renaissance walls and architecture left. And even more recently, it was the uh, birthplace of the opera composer Puccini. So if you're a Puccini fan, that's where he got his start. But we're not here to talk about all that. We're here to talk about olives. And uh, Luca was an enormous olive oil, olive oil producing region back in the 1800s, um, uh, shipping out through the port city of Genoa. And that's when a company called Pompeian started uh, way back then. Um, and it was doing pretty well shipping to the United States. Um, but in 1906, a gentleman, let me get his name right, named Nathan Muster, um, had a plan. He purchased Pompeian and saw an enormous growth market in the United States. In the 1880s, 1890s, 1900s, um, we were getting thousands of immigrants from Europe every week coming into the United States. And many of them brought with them their cooking traditions where olive oil was a central component. And for the Americans who are already here, maybe tasting olive oil for the first time, they really liked it, and olive oil started to take off. Um, Muster uh, saw that growth potential. He built uh, olive oil warehouses in Spain for the European market, and then here in Baltimore in 1906 for the American market, um, got the olive oil from the harbor, put it on a, a, a railroad car, and got it up here to where we are today uh, to put it in bottles to send out to, to the rest of America. Things were going really well for them until World War I, when basically uh, ship between uh, Europe and the United States came to a halt, uh, but Pompeian uh, made it through that, uh, that tough era. At the end of it, one of the innovations they decided to do uh, was shift their bottling plant from uh, Europe to here in Baltimore. So this was going to become their headquarters and their manufacturing facility. In the 1930s, uh, a Baltimore family that's, uh, that's own history is intertwined with Baltimore's um, took over at Pompeian, and that's the Hofburger family. The Hofburgers came with uh, Charles and Sarah in the 1880s from Eastern Europe. Um, and, uh, and their history is really fascinating. Over the years, they have led a number of Baltimore companies and institutions, oil companies, both petroleum and now olive in the 1930s. Um, for a while, they were ahead of our own Natty Bow uh, beer, our iconic Baltimore beer. Um, they were the owners of the Baltimore Orioles for a while. And most recently, some of us have the pleasure of knowing Rebecca Hofberger, who 30 years ago founded the American Visionary Art Museum um, and who this year is retiring after that incredibly wrong run, uh, run there. So the Hofburgers took over and one of the things the Hofburgers were really good at was branding and marketing. And in the 1930s, Pompeian became the first nationwide olive oil brand. You could find bottles of Pompeian in Baltimore, but also out in California and Texas and Oregon and Florida, really all over. It took off. Um, the Hofburgers owned the company up until the 19th 1970s, um, and they sold it to a family from Spain, the Marino family. And something I learned in preparing for this uh, video is that Spain is the world's olive oil, world's leading olive oil producer. It's not Italy, it's not Greece, um, it's Spain. The Marino family kept the tradition and kept the headquarters here at Baltimore um, and kept importing olive oil and, uh, and distributing it from here uh, on Pulaski Highway. Um, the Marinos owned it, uh, owned the company until uh, 2009 when a family from Morocco bought it, the DeVico family. Um, and they have made uh, some changes but uh, kept the headquarters here. Um, one of the changes that they made relatively recently is a 
commitment to buy the olive oil from family farms, a cooperative of family farms in Spain. They also started uh, Pompeian's own farm in California. But most of the olive oil that rolls in here comes across the Atlantic uh, from the family farmers. In a lot of ways, this company is now owned by a family farm cooperative. Um, but the olive oil rolls in here, it gets bottled up here. There's so much of it gets bottled that they make their own bottles uh, on site here. Um, and then it rolls out, again, across the country, all 50 states, you can find the various Pompeian brands of olive oil. But I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Muna to share with us a little bit about what uh, Pompeian is doing today um, here in Baltimore and uh, literally across the world. Hello, my name is Muna Isawi. I'm the Executive VP and Chief Operating Officer at Pompeian Olive Oil. And uh, today we mark our first day of collaboration with the Waterfront Partnership. We are sponsoring Mr. Uh, Trashwheel along with Professor Trashwheel. And we're very excited to just uh, extend our collaboration with the Baltimore community. We take great pride of everything that we do within this building, but also in our facilities, whether in California or across the world. And we make sure that we give opportunities for our employees to uh, volunteer and really uh, be part of the um, community as we are a stakeholder. The important part for us is to listen to what the needs are and take our responsibility very seriously. That starts with responsible sourcing, our impact on uh, the environment, what do we do in terms of sustainability, how do we improve our packaging, but most importantly, how can we really have an impact on the health and wellness of the community and the people that um, are working today at Pompeii and uh, that also have been contributing to the history of Pompeii. So um, every single part of our uh, job has to have an impact on um, how we're going to be moving the company forward, but also remembering where we come from and taking great, great part uh, of our history. And that's how we always think about new ways of continuing to be part of Baltimore as we've been since 1906. Thank you.